Nostalgia. It's a dangerous thing. Doesn't feel too long ago when I was playing Minecraft for the first time, struggling uh? to make a door. However, looking back, I realized that that was over 10 years ago. Since then, Minecraft has added everything from bees to birch tree forests, dark oak to the deep dark, withers to wardens. So much has changed in that time. But what if we was to go back, all the way back to where it all began on November the 18th, 2011, and survive 100 days in the original version of? Of Minecraft. My goals? Enchant a full set of diamond armor, craft myself a knock apple, get every single original achievement, and of course, kill the ender dragon. This should be fun. If you go on to enjoy the video, then please consider leaving myself a like because it would help me out with the algorithm. If you enjoy videos like this entirely, then maybe check out some more and consider subscribing because, hell, I'm not gonna turn on another subscription. And YouTube comment shout out of the day goes to Carson Fisher, who apparently loves my content. Thank you so much for saying so, Carson. I hope you all carry on enjoying the videos. Ah, survive. Island, it's good to be back. Wait, wait, wrong, wrong video. Well, this spawn sucks. At least there's a single tree, which isn't much, but it's enough to make me about. I honestly would have considered staying here if I didn't just survive 200 days in Survival Island. Which you can go check out in the card at the top right. Into the boat I go, and oh god, I forgot how boats used to suck. After spotting a second tree, I did want to get out of the boat, but unfortunately, there's no way to actually get out of the boat without breaking the bloody thing, so I guess I'll just have to keep doing that. Whilst we are traveling the wide ocean, I'm going to quickly point out a couple of obvious things. Firstly, if you can't tell by the widgets on the screen, then this was all streamed in my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Haveland. Go follow if you want to see some more live 100 days videos. Secondly, Minecraft 1.0 oceans can be massive as you could probably tell, so this took a minute. In fact, over 10 minutes passed before the time I actually found myself some land. I'm not even kidding, it literally took me over 10 minutes. And this land had sheep, legendary, and also some spiders and some skeletons. Then we've only taken Taking a little bit of damage and I was able to sleep away the night. You may notice that my skin is just Steve himself and that's because Minecraft doesn't actually save your old skin unless I think you have a very very old Minecraft account which I did have back then but I've changed accounts since and well we're just gonna have to suffer with Steve for the time being. I did find myself a few chickens to give me some food and don't forget some cows too and then I found a nice service cave where I popped in there to grab the basics. You know some stone, some iron, some coal. There was even a mine shaft down here which you'll soon to see is very abundant in this version. After slowly working my way in, I carefully picked up as much iron as I could. There was plenty of mobs, but without having to tire my attacks, they were actually quite easy to deal with. And then I also found myself two endermen. Since there's no warped forest in this version, I realized that every enderman I see, I'm going to have to try and take out to get some ender pearls. Killing the both, I was able to get one ender pearl, which is not too bad. And then two more endermen right there. Weirdly, in this version, trying to look at them directly doesn't work all the time. Not sure why. Oh, my which is weird, I guess, but at least I was able to get two more ender pearls, three in total. Day three came around and with the iron cooked, let's make ourselves a sword. Let's make us a shield. Wait, I... I'm stupid. Made myself some armor and then I made myself some tools and decided to set up shop on this tiny little island over here. My first priority is that I wanted to get a bunch of food and so I started setting up a fenced area and then I went to go and find some cows. They should be following me with this wheat, but should being the keyword any day down. I mean, I got one of them, so into the pen you go for the time being. Who is so happy in there? Look at him dancing. This is great. I had to go back the next day on day four to get a second one, and honestly, this didn't take too long. Let's start the breeding process because, well, I'm gonna need 100 days worth of food. The other cows in the area were, um, dealt with, and with a start on the food, it was now time for me to work on a little home. I tried to make it look good with, like, trap doors and stairs, but, well, it wasn't coming along great, let's be honest. I was just doing more building on day five. It's kind of incredible that I actually started playing Minecraft in the beta version. I know how to survive. I've done my fair share of PvP, CTM maps, everything you'd want to do, but the one thing I've never learned to do is actually build a good house. I mean, you know, some things never change, I guess. I know what you're thinking. How is it taking you three days to basically get this far? Well, um, you know, what's your problem? What's the pro- what's the- what's the problem, Mitchell? Day 7, I decided I was done for the time being. I found some more sheep and grabbed a couple extra pieces of wool because it was time for me to go caving. There's definitely an old feel to them, as you could probably see, but man, I don't mind searching them, not gonna lie. In fact, the whole caving generation was quite cool itself. I actually got myself some diamonds too. At this point, I had seven in total, which was a pretty damn good start, if I do say so myself. I was still in the caves on day 8, where I started by upgrading my tools before getting jump scared by a zombie. Gets it. Oh my Jesus, find me in the Alps. I'm sorry. That scared the absolute living god. Oh, I'm sorry, people. 
that was <laughs> that scared the jeebus out of me. <laughs> Ugh. All right then. Anyway, moving on. There were quite a few mobs down here, even some sneaky little sausages, the creepers that they are, as you can probably see. But the thing is about old Minecraft is that the player is actually very bulky. So the damage I take at this point is very, very little. You do heal up slowly when your hunger is full, but it still requires you to take a lot of damage to get to that point. Also really helps that mobs are just really dumb, just casually walking into lava like nobody's business. And then I found myself a skeleton spawner, which is actually going to be really useful in the long run. You see, in old Minecraft, you can't just mine ores to get XP. The only way for you to legitimately get XP is by killing mobs. And so saving these corners for later, I plan to actually make myself a grinder in due course. But for the time being, I'm going to move on and grab myself some obsidian. And then it was onto the deep dark caves. Actually, you know what? I'm good. Let's let's dig up. I popped up the next day and I was right next to my house, which is a pretty good spot. I made myself an enchant table, popped straight into the nether, where into the nether there's a fortress right there. Isn't that really good? Almost wants to make me ignore how goddamn awful this place looks. Like, oh Jesus, this looks terrible. Anyway, time to leave. I finished the day by actually just finishing off the house that I worked on a couple of days ago. Now that it was complete, I don't plan on building anytime soon. And then on day 10, I realized that I was a dirty little liar, and so I went from one build to another. You know what sucks in old Minecraft? Swimming. It's not like current day Minecraft where you can actually swim and move fast. It was the old Minecraft swimming where you just look how slow this is. This is awful. And so I decided to make myself a bridge or at least I started to. I wanted to make a pretty basic design. This wasn't going to look fancy or anything. It was a wooden plank flooring with log stilts. I did have to get an extra little bit of wood but considering that I'm building to a literal forest that wasn't a problem at all. And by day 11 I had the bridge complete. Now it was time for me to go and find some chickens. A long-term goal is for me to kill the ender dragon, and there's no way I'm going to be able to do that without getting myself some arrows. Also, food would be nice. I mean, thinking back, it would have been really, really useful if I didn't kill those chickens on day two that were right next to my base, but I guess we'll live and learn. Found myself a lot of cows, like a lot of them. My god, why was there so many cows? There wasn't a single chicken though, but there was actually a village. I was heading over there, and well, villages of this version are just the most useless thing you will ever see. Not only do they not offer trades, but blacksmiths don't have chests. Like, what, what's the point of them even being here? And before you say wheat, Mitchell, I don't need wheat. I already have farms. Don't you dare say that to me, Mitchell. I did find some chickens near the village, though, which was pretty good. Now, they don't follow seeds, which I absolutely hate. They follow wheat, which is just a Minecraft 1.0 thing, I guess. Though when I started leading them back, I actually was having a couple of problems with the mobs. Leading the chickens back whilst being shot and stuff, it's just, it just ain't easy. You know, also what ain't easy suicidal chickens like what well, what was the point man like what well, it wasn't gonna be that bad i was gonna take care of you the one chicken that i had i'm just gonna stick in a hole and call it for the night i did also get an extra ender pearl as i was heading home as well which was pretty good and then on day 12 i decided it was time for another caving trip first thing to note is that my efficiency pickaxe breaks dirt quicker which you know that's just a lack of wonder oh thing i guess and then i found myself another mine shaft and then i found myself another skeleton spawner and so i decided to put a pause on the caving trip because this skeleton spawner was much closer than the other one and I was going to set myself up a grinder. I decided the best way for me to do this is actually make myself a ladder system all the way up to the top of the surface and by the time I got up to the top it was night so I decided it's time for me to head home. I got back to the spawner on day 13 and I'm not gonna lie this was a really really basic spawner. At some point I'll set up a proper grinder for the most efficiency but for now this will do. Anyway I wanted to get back to caving see if I can get some more diamonds. I mean sure nothing will go wrong. The back of the side of it is that I'm gonna be able to Oh my, stop it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. <sighs> Give me a second. I j that damn it was me with like a hundred percent confident that I died. I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be a hundred percent. That damn it was me thinking I died. <laughs> Everything is fine. No need to panic. 
Minecraft Wonder OSD for mm. Bulky Boy. I ran out of caves by day 14 and started strip mining. Honestly, the caves weren't really giving me any diamonds anyway, so just changing it up would have been a good idea. It did take me a minute, but I actually got some. I mean, it was only two diamonds, but hey, we'll take it. Anyway, it's back to stripping. Uh, mining, Stri strip mining, mining! I stripped mine straight into diamonds on day 15, and that was pretty neat. I now had seven more in total, which was pretty good. And to be honest, that should do for now. It's time for me to head home, because I got some other plans. And yet again, as I popped to the surface, it was nighttime. Day 16, I made myself a diamond sword and got the sharpness enchantment on it, and then I made myself a diamond helmet. I did try to make myself an anvil, but I mean, I should have known. And you know what you guys should have known? I always, always are gonna get myself free wolf of boys. I shall call them the Pacton. I call that the Pacton. Also, in this version, you can't breed wolves. It's just a <laughs> Minecraft 1.0 thing. And then, though, when I saw wolves inside this house, I would say that's just a 1.0 thing. But let's be honest, that's just a Minecraft thing. Like, get in there. Come on. I've got stuff to do. Heading back to the mob grinder on day 17, I instantly changed my plans. And so I started to get some glass just to make it more visible. I don't know. And then after two minutes of grinding, I honestly got a little bit bored and decided to head into the nether. I'm going to go and see if I could take on that fortress. I was easily able to make my way in on day 18 where I found myself a blaze spawner. And which thanks to super bulky Steve himself, I was easily able to take down a bunch of blaze. Places. Also found some water quite quickly. That wasn't a problem. And that's it. That was time for me to head home. To re-quote myself in what I said in the live stream, I'll never ever have to go back into the nether. You'll see that I'm only slightly wrong about that. And something I haven't mentioned so far is I set myself up a sugarcane farm to try and get a bunch of books to get a level 30 enchanter set up. I forgot that you don't need leather to create books in this version because I guess that's just a pack of 1.0 thing. I'll just use the sugarcane instead. Day 19, the first thing I did was grab some extra extra wool and then I headed back down to the skeleton grinder. I made a tiny room for sleeping and then came up with the stupidest idea possible. I wanted to be able to see whether it be day or night time at any point and so I dug a two by one tunnel to the surface to see if the light would show down. If only there was an item in Minecraft that would do that for me automatically and by the time it was done when you look up you can't even tell if it's day or night. This was an absolute waste of time every way I look at it. Anyway it's time for me to start on on the grind after I take a quick nap course. The grinder was working fine on day 20, but I knew it could be better. And so what I did was I found a 10 year old video. I'm, I'm not even kidding. This literally how to create the perfect 1.0 Minecraft grinder. That's how old this video is. Basically, the idea was to dig out a 9x9 nine nine grid and then slap some water down to obviously let the skeleton spawn. That's as far as the spawner can spawn, gives the max possible spawnage. After digging out the entire room, I placed some water down and she was about as ready as she can be. Considering it's a 1.0 spawner it was about as good as it possibly could be don't get me wrong it was a massive improvement over the original that i had but it did create a new problem now my bed was too close and so i had to dig out a second little room to be able to sleep through the nights i did do a little bit more maintenance work on day 21 by adding some glass and now i can actually see where the skeletons are the next bit was kind of simple i just needed to grind so you see those 18 levels you see them right there just gonna there we go 30 levels by day 28 basically a full week could you imagine like just sitting here for seven full days and just hitting skeletons over and over again my god also want to point out all the arrows that i got at this point so i don't really need to worry about chickens or anything anymore but i'm seriously done with grinding at this point so it's time for me to head home oh wow a, a clock on, on day 29 that'd have been that'd have been useful 10 days ago anyway after making another bed i headed back towards the grinder not not to grind but to strip yeah you might have though got a mitchell come on i was able to get plenty of coal, plenty of iron, redstone, sure. Also got a tiny little bit of gold. And don't forget those diamonds. Oh, oh wait, no, no, no diamonds. That is until I actually found myself a cave. I should really stop trying to strip my divine diamonds. Exploring the rest of the cave on day 30, there was little to nothing here. Just a little bit more gold. Admittedly, there was a couple more diamonds. I now had eight in total. But after running out of caves again, I decided it was time for me to go back to strip mines. I did lose track a little bit here of the day but just know between day 31 and 34 the next couple of events happened. I found a new cave on day 31. There wasn't really much here other than 
in this giant lava pool. And then, of course, there was the cave sheep, you know, just sheep in, in a cave. Just a wonder <laughs> thing, I guess. And then I found myself five more diamonds before being chased out of the area by some creepers. The usual. At least he was able to chase me into a mine shaft. I haven't seen one of those before. And it was at this point where I actually started grabbing a bunch of rails. Why? On a rail. On a what? I hear you ask. Well, first of all, Mitchell, shut up. I'm about to explain. Second of all, on a rail is a very old Minecraft achievement. Basically, the player, that is you, has to travel 1,000 blocks via minecart in one succession. But to do that, that of course requires you to make, well, 1,000 rails. And instead of doing that, I'm just going to collect them in the mine shafts. Luckily, the mine shafts in this version are absolutely huge, so I really didn't have to worry that much. Well, I did run out of it by the end of 34, so it was time for me to head home. I got back home by day 35, where I made myself a quote-unquote good gear chest. 17 diamonds I had now, and 8 gold blocks, which is actually enough for me to get an uber apple. Juicy to give me one of those apples, and so I started cutting down a bunch of trees. I don't know how this fire started. I personally blame Mitchell. But after a full day of deforestation, I didn't get a single apple, which I thought was kind of, huh. Well, what can you do? I must have just got seriously unlucky. Anyway, time for bed. I wasn't actually streaming the past few days because I thought it was going to be kind of boring, but by day 36, I was back to streaming. And so the first thing I did on this day was actually show my viewers at the time exactly what I did over the days that I weren't streaming. It was mainly just the loot that I collected and the grinder that I made. And then it was back to the forest to try and get myself an apple, where I failed again. Didn't realize apples were so rare, but eh, what can you do? On day 37, hey, look, an enderman. This guy was trolling. I'm like, bro, stand still. Bro, stand. Bro, get back. Bro. I didn't even get a pearl from him. Oh, that was cool. And then somebody pointed out in chat that my bridge was a little misaligned, so I had to quickly fix it. Wasn't really much of a fix, so that was quick. And then it was time for me to get onto the big task. It's time for me to make a railway system. I was about 10% done at this point on getting rails, so you know, only a little bit more to go. And then I wanted to quickly fish because there was, of course, the fishing achievement, which I surprisingly failed on. Hmm. It did take me a second on day 38, but I was able to get the fish. Throw that bad boy in the furnace. I'll get that achievement in no time. And then I decided to get myself some diamond stuff. Let's enchant a diamond sword. <sighs> of course. It was also this point where I was able to make 15 bookshelves, and so I flattened out a little bit of land near the house and placed the bookshelves on them. And it wasn't working. Like, the max level I was getting at this point was 23, which I thought was really weird. I decided to just grab a bit of extra sugar cane and get some more bookshelves. I guess there's no such thing as too many bookshelves, so, you know. Day 39, here we go. Let's do a level 29 enchant on my diamond pickaxe. Uh... Oh, and in case you didn't know, old Minecraft uses all of your levels. There ain't no do-overs. That, that's it. I just got on breaking free, which helps nobody. After spending a minute contemplating life, I got back to work on the rail system. Before, of course, running out of rails. Well, it's time for me to get back into the caves. I started strip mining by day 40. By the time I got into a cave, I did get myself a couple of diamonds, you know, the use. Speaking of the use, by day 41, I found myself a new mine shaft where I was able to get some more rails. I also did find myself a spider spawner, which I actually had a saddle in, which I'm going to need for later. And then I got myself even more diamonds. I had 13 in total at this point, which I thought was pretty nice. So more caving like usual on day 42, but I did see an opportunity. There was a ravine right here with a skeleton in, and there is an achievement to kill a skeleton with a bow from 50 blocks away. Just a shame I can't see a bloody thing. Between falling into lava, and then nearly getting creeper bombed, it was clear that this wasn't going to work in the cave, so I decided to head to the surface. I made some new pantalones and then made myself a sword. I could finally enchant them, and I actually got myself some decent enchants too. Basic, but decent. Rails were really becoming a bit of a rare resource on 43, and I'm going to need so much of them, but I did learn that you only need six iron to be able to turn 16 rails into, well, rails. In my opinion, I have so much spare iron, there's nothing extra I need to force. This was a pretty good trade-off. And so I started working back on the railway system. What I was doing was the eye of enders that I was able to craft at this point, I was using them to lead me towards the stronghold and then leading the rails that way just to be able to kill two birds with one stone. I could ride over there quickly and also find the stronghold potentially at the same time. At this point, I'd probably say I was about 50% done, so not terrible but there is definitely still work to do and then it was time for me to sleep but there was monsters nearby which i couldn't see i thought it was the creepers up there until i was wrong it can't be those they're way too far away oh there it is are you kidding me it's fine whatever i don't even care 
well, that sucked. Anyway, on day 44, I was able to fix the home up, and then I wanted to find myself a pig. Another achievement in old Minecraft is called When Pigs Fly, which requires you to make a pig tick full damage once you're riding it with a saddle. Didn't find any pigs this day, but I was able to trap a skeleton at the night, so let's try and get the sniper's duel again. I moved 50 blocks away and... Oh, did he despawn? All right, let's try that again, trapping a second skeleton, and this time I was able to kill him, but uh, didn't get the achievement, which I thought was kind of uh, kind of strange. All right, third time's a charm. Surely I'll get it this time. Nope, didn't work again. Did a little bit of research on this one. It turns out in old Minecraft, this particular achievement is actually bugged out. You may have even seen it in Luke the Notables 100 days, but there's no way to get this achievement in old Minecraft. At least not on PC. You could do it on Xbox. I don't know. It was just one of those. Everybody knows what I'm about to say. Minecraft 1.0 things, I guess. I didn't even get home before 45 rows. I mean, the night ended. I spent so long trying to kill skeletons, but here we are at 45. I was actually about to run out of food too, which was which was fun. Let's get this bread. And then it was on to the to-do board. The usual for a haven under 100 days. The biggest thing was the food situation. The food you are seeing in my inventory right now is legitimately all the food that I've been able to get so far. You'd think after 45 days I'd have more, but let's be honest, this is just a little bit sad. And so on day 46, I began making myself a giant farm. I decided to flatten the land nearby my home on the bigger island a little bit away, and I then set up a design to maximize the farming that I could. You see, in old Minecraft, if you were to walk on crops, there's a small chance that crop would break and you'd actually lose the seed. I know, Minecraft 1.0 things. Anyway, moving on. And so what I did was make a sort of path lane system so I'd be able to get it through each individual farm, and hopefully that would give me the max amount of crops. It was more planted by day 47, Till I ran out of seeds, that is. And with that done, I went out looking for some pigs again. Hey, I found some. That was pretty easy. Now we just got to get into fall off a little pillar. All right, that failed. Oh, come on. God damn it. Oh, you son of a... On day 48, I got it. That was not too bad at all. You don't get to keep the saddle, by the way. That saddle's gone forever. To be fair, horses aren't in the game, so I can't really do much else with them, but it would have been a nice souvenir. You know, whilst I'm here, I think it might be best to just do some casual pig slaughter. I'm gonna get some food. And I also did stumble upon a nearby desert and decided to set up a little bit of a base. I actually did this in the old versions of Minecraft I used to play where I would set up a little base in a desert and then spend my time killing Endermen. I don't know if it was a common thing for people to do it this way, but this is what we had to do before the war forest and the trades became available, guys. Like, this is how it used to be. Also, whilst I was finding Endermen of the Night, if you ever need proof that old Steve is bulky, then you just see this clip of me being shot into a hole and a creeper blowing up literally one block away from me. Yeah, he did zero damage. I know just Minecraft 1.0 things. Ended up getting four pills this night, which was pretty good. Day 49, I did actually spot a spawner in the sand over here, which was completely useless. But think about this for a second. When was the last time you found a spawner like this in the newer versions of Minecraft? Because I feel like I haven't seen one in forever like this. Anyway, whilst on the way home, well, I found myself some wolves. Wolves! Now hear me out. We get a pack of wolves. All right, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out! We get a pack of wolves. We call them some gimmicky name. We repeat the joke a hundred times over. People for some weird reason like it. Million subscribers. Any questions? And I also spotted some chickens on the way back and I decided it was time for me to try and get an egg. Not really sure what was going on here, but still, I guess we'll just, uh, I guess we'll wait this one out. And let's get him in a hole and, well, you too, Miss Chicken. Get in the hole. I punched it with a wheat and it died. What is happening in Minecraft? This is ridiculous. Day 50, and I got one, lads. I got one. People probably thinking, why in the world am I wanting an egg? Well, first of all, Mitchell, for the last time, stop interrupting me. And second of all, because the cake is a lie. It's, it's an achievement. You need to bake a cake. Anyway, it took most of the day, but I got myself home. Day 51, I got that cake too. Also, something you may have noticed in the bottom right is that I was able to keep track of my days. Now, I didn't actually update it for day 51, so this is basically two days in one. I'm not going to update it as I go along, because then, it, I mean, be 101 days. I, I've wait. Day 51 is two days in one. I hope I hope that's okay. I mean, it's more content. Why wouldn't it be? Returning back into the caves on day 51, I wanted to get a bunch of iron. Need more rails, of course. And luckily, over the time of playing Minecraft, I've actually been leaving the iron because, well, originally I didn't have a need for it. Also, a reminder of how dumb and funny the old mobs are. Here is a skeleton dropping out of the sky to get a single hit that did no damage. Here is a creeper that's basically walking into lava to try and get to me without doing any damage. And, well, just Minecraft 1.0 things. I need a counter for that. 
Oh, also, an another mine shaft. Who'd, who'd have seen that one coming? I got back to the surface on day 52, where I started cooking all the iron that I collected at this point. Whilst it was cooking, I was going and placing the rails that I could, still following the eyes along the way. That pretty much summed up day 52. And with plenty of iron spare on day 53, I restocked on as many rails as I could. I also started making powered rails at this point. Probably should have done that from the start, but eh. Started placing those bad boys down as I ran along the path. And well, this is going to take a couple of days to complete it, but... Well, we'll get there. The biggest problem I found on day 54 wasn't necessarily the rails, but I was actually running out of blocks to place the rails on. But I'm fairly sure at this point I did actually have enough rails. I just got to get them down. So moving on to day 55, I would like to quickly point out that I've been live working on this for hours, about to finish off the railway system. Well, somebody alerted me to something that happened or was about to happen that I really wish they, they told me about earlier. You have to travel 1,000 meters, in brackets, 1,000 blocks from the point where you started in one direction. The rails can go up or down, but they do have to go 1,000 blocks in one direction. You could divert from the path, but you have to travel 1,000 blocks in one direction. So, you need to build a huge track in a straight line. Like the track can't have any tents or burns. It has to be 1,000 blocks in one direction. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Well. Well. Tits on my ankles. That is really, really, really bad. It's not okay. Because I've spent about four days... <sighs> Four days. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Oh, God. I do not have the shoulder for this. <laughs> oh, no. They couldn't have told me an hour ago that it had to be straight. Why? I decided on day 56 that I needed a break from placing rails and so I decided to make a new bridge. I also did a little bit of farming. It was really nice and relaxing, but I just, I needed to get this rail thing done. I need to get it out of the way as quick as possible. It took until day 57 to complete the rails. I also did a little bit of maths and worked out that I definitely, definitely had enough rails to do it. I just had to well place them. But you know, I like to think I'm a nice guy. I'm not going to make watch that. Here we are on day 60 where it was done let's get riding on the rail car system i'm gonna speed up the footage a little bit and whilst i'm doing that i'm gonna sell out if that's okay just a reminder about liking and subscribing and checking out my twitch and also my discord if you want to be part of that listen if you if you're this part of the video which is probably a good 20 25 minutes in at this point then you've, you've got to like the video right so at least do one of those things for me please to be a cool guy and with enough selling out done there you go that's uh that's on a rail done thank god that leaves us with overkill do eight hearts of damage with one single hit, find the stronghold, kill the dragon, brew a potion, and of course the bug sniper door, which, uh, well, this is coming along really nicely. Day 61, I ran back to the mob grinder, not to grind, but to actually get myself some bones. Since the farm was not done, I thought I could speed up the process by using some bone meal. God, bone mealing in 1.0 is so overpowered. Like, you just have to use it once and it will automatically grow to the maximum amount. That's just crazy good. I had most of it done by day 62. Also, look at all this bread. God, is it nice to actually have food. I know, shocking. After that, I returned back to the grinder for actual grinding this time, because I want to do a level 30 enchant on my sword. This would help me get the overkill achievement that I just spoke about. It does require me to stand around and murder a little, so let me just, uh... Alright, day 69, I got myself my 30th levels. I wish I could say that I planned to get it on day 69, but, well, I didn't. Anyway, with 30 levels achieved, it was time for me to head back home. The first thing I wanted was that apple. Let's take down some trees where, well, I failed badly, which I thought was pretty odd. I had cut down this forest at least three or four times at this point, and the fact that I didn't get a single apple made me question if there was even apples in the game. And so I decided to watch some YouTube videos to give me a little bit more information. You don't believe me? Listen to this intro. Hi everybody, Paul Source Jr. here. Today is December 2nd, 2011, and it looks like the very first pre-release for Minecraft 1.0 is out 
doing more research on 70 hours checking out the Wikipedia where you'd think out of all things that would be an original Minecraft, apples dropping from trees would be one of them. Nope, that is not the case. Apples dropping from trees was only added to Minecraft in version 1.1. Oh god damn it. I legitimately would just love to have one conversation with Notch asking why that wasn't added in 1.0. The rest of it fine. Why not apples from trees? That makes no sense. You want to know what makes this even stupider? Apples are in the game, but you can only get them from strongholds, which means technically speaking, the Minecraft apple in version 1.0 is rarer than goddamn diamonds. Whose idea was that? You know what? I'm getting too worked up about this. Let's just enchant a diamond sword and do a level 30 on that. All I need is one of the enchantments that will do additional damage. Bane of arthropods, really? You could have at least given me smite. I mean, I'll take that looting too. That looting too looks quite nice. To make sure that I did enough damage as well, I decided to make myself a strength 2 potion. Never got glowstone though, so for the first time in 60 days, it's time for me to head back into the nether. Wasn't too hard on day 71 to grab some. I mean, look, it was right there. And then I was able to make myself some strength 2 potions. Also decided to make myself some extended speeds as well, and it was time for me to move on. I decided to run back to the desert that I set up shop at earlier to see if I can find a spider. And a simple case of spotting him, drinking up, and one tapping that spider, I had now the achievement. Celebrate by taking a nap. After returning home on day 72, I decided to work on a couple of paths. Basically, I just wanted to make a somewhat path between my base all the way until the mob grinder. It was mainly just work with stairs. And once I had that done, I did a little bit more far work on day 73. The farming was admittedly quite slow, and so I decided just for a little bit extra food, I'm going to go and kill some pigs and cows. And I accidentally ran back to the desert shack again, and since I was here, I decided, you know what? Let me go and see if I kill some more endermen to get some enderpearls. I already had about 10 eyes of ender at this point, but I saw I decided it better be to be safe than sorry, and so I started killing as many endermen as I could. I did fall back into that hole again and got blown up by a creeper again, but it was exactly the same thing outcome, like zero damage basically. This process was incredibly sped up though thanks to the looting I got, where I got myself eight more ender pearls, which is more than enough. It's time for me to find the end portal and light it up. That is after I cook some more shmeat. All right, time to head home. Day 74 and 14 eyes of ender, you say? I have zero intention of finding the dragon just yet, but might be useful to find the stronghold, save the coordinates, and like I say, light the portal. And so I ended up heading into the world to see if I could find the stronghold where, would you look at that? That's the original island that I spawned on all the way back on day one. Isn't that just cute? It was quite a long journey. It was day 76 by the time I actually found myself the stronghold. And well, it took me even longer to find the portal. Here we are on day 76 where I found myself the portal. I also found a chest that had three incredibly very rare 1.0 apples. And like I say, I'm just gonna light the portal, but I don't wanna enter it. Just wanna have it lit so I can go- Oh, God damn it! When I say this ruins some plans, this ruins some plans. I wasn't planning on fighting the Ender Dragon until the 90 plus mark, and I was also planning to do it live, but both of those plans have sort of gone a little, as the kids would say, tits up, but I guess it couldn't be helped at this point. Now, I didn't actually have the best gear that I wanted to fight the ender dragon also i didn't really have that many arrows and my bow was basic i'm gonna have to be really careful here for those who have not seen it before the old dragon fight was incredibly different to today's fights the pillars with the crystals were all randomly set the dragon would only attack by swooping down on you but the weird thing about it is that if you laid any damage on the ender dragon whatsoever it would fly away and not do any attack on you honestly taking him out was incredibly easy but to take him down to get the egg and the levels that i was about to get 100% worth it. I mean, 110 levels. God damn, that's a lot of levels. Well, time for me to head home. Oh, right. I uh, forgot that I was sleeping as I was moving along, so I'm going to have to head all the way back home. Oh, that sucks. Day 78, I started making a boat trip, a exact same boat trip that I made 77 days apart, which is kind of crazy to me. But coming up to see my home again was an absolute beautiful sight. I made myself a mini monument to the egg and I even added some clothes on around it. How cute. Anyway, I got myself 110 levels, so I better get spending them on a new diamond pickaxe. Efficiency free? Really? Nah, yeah, I'll try again tomorrow. That ain't much better, day 79. That ain't much better. Alright, third time's the charm. Give me some fortune. Oh, why? Well, with the rest of the levels that I've got, I may as well see about enchanting a sword. 15 levels? Knock back one. What? That ain't even a 1.0 thing. That's a screw you haven and you suck thing.
Well, let's go into the caves and we need to get some more diamonds because my diamond armor is falling apart. And this is where I'd have the footage of me mining diamonds on day 80. If I had any day 81s and diamonds in a, in a strip mine, you say? Also, here's another point black damageless creeper. Maybe I am just a god. And then after that, I got myself even more diamonds. And look, on day 82, I found a one vein of diamond. How cool. Well, I wanted myself a full set of diamond armor and by day 83 I found my 25th diamond And so I think I was pretty much done caving potentially for the final time So I decided to head home I decided that yet again I was fed up of swinging over this giant lake over here So let's make one more bridge first things first I need to get myself some wood from the trees day 84 came and listen You all seem like really nice people you've watched the video all up until this point and just so you know This bridge was an absolute pain to make so much of a pain like Jesus it took so much more wood than I expected and so I spent the next three days building it and as much as I would love to commentate and then I started building the bridge and then I started getting wood and then I started building the bridge I'm not about to do that to you guys so here we are day 87 it was all completed and on day 88 I decided to head back to the farm it was now completed and it worked like a charm look at all that bread god it looks yummy I'm gonna nom nom on that a little bit and I really need to get the armor back up and so I decided to head back to the spawner only to get enough levels to enchant each piece I came I re-enchanted my armor on day 89 and looking good haven looking good speaking of looking good i should probably make the enchant table look a bit more fancy it's done a lot of work for me and since i wanted to make some stuff look fancy on day 90 i decided to make a couple of paths around the areas that i was it was just between the farms and the bridges and it was a very simple gravel and stone stair path don't, don't get me wrong it wasn't anything special here i had to spend all of 91 working on this one as well honestly it really wasn't that special and then with eight days spare i caught a couple couple of more things that I want to do. First thing was I wanted to make a cobblestone 100 and so I made it on the path over here. I was able to complete it the same day but I wanted to get some glowstones to fill in the O's and so on day 93 I headed back into nether and got a bunch of glowstone. Just a couple of pieces no bigger. And then on day 94 to keep this all moving we got ourselves enough glowstone filled out the O's and the 100 was completed. And then I lost my footage. Yeah I don't have any footage between 95 and 99 and I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't do that much, but I will at least show you the final tour on day 100. First things first, let's retake the rail because I put a lot of time into it. I deserve to use it one more time. I looked at the house where I know it may look a little bit exploded. That wasn't my fault. It was Mitchell. He came in and did everything. Can we all just boycott Mitchell in the comments? I'm, I'm all for that. Got a nice little area for the enchanter, the pass that led past the hundred, the farm. Everything about this world was great. The only thing for me to do as the sunset was to eat this uber apple. It only gives you regeneration. All the resistances and the absorption, that wasn't a thing yet. So this kind of was a waste of gold admittedly. But I was done. I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.